Um, today, I'm delighted to have back Jim Stapleton from Olus Money. Um, Jim kicked off our series way back in last September when he talked us through financial well-being. Uh, today, he's going to share some more tools for helping uh, achieve financial well-being. He's going to show you um, some cash flow modeling techniques. Some of these will be uh, something you can do yourselves and others you will need expertise to help. But at least you'll understand what's available and what's on offer. Uh, a little bit about Olus. Brendan and I established Olus Money in 2009 as a financial planning and well-being practice. The reason being we wanted to enhance the financial well-being of our clients through education, information and knowledge sharing. As some of you may know, Olus is the Irish for information our knowledge but also we wanted to help our clients navigate their journey through life their financial journey through life the areas that we help and give advice on are the financial planning side and brendan heads up that for us and the cash flow modeling all that kind of stuff there uh, the financial well-being webinars and seminars that we do for for you know that we're doing today that we do for employers and um, today's webinar is all about financial planning and cash flow modeling so the elements that make up your money, it's all these areas here from income that we're earning today, we'll pay our tax, that income will be transferred into our bank accounts, and then we'll spend it. And some of you will excel at that area. Then we hope to protect that income. If anything happens to us going forward, the what ifs of life, we might try and save some money, we'll borrow some, we'll plan for retirement, the, the life we want to lead after retirement, and then planning for older age as well. So they are all the elements that make up you know, our money uh, within every household. We are a financial planning and financial well-being practice. And I always like to reiterate what exactly we consider to be financial well-being. It's when you and your family can fully meet your current financial obligations. You feel secure in your ability to meet the future financial obligations for you and your household. You have the peace of mind when it comes to the, the what ifs that life can bring. And we'll talk about some of those in, in the webinar. And you have the ability to make financial choices that allow you to enjoy your life. And that's very important to us, that you have the ability to make choices to allow you to enjoy your life. The CCPC. The financial capability or launched the financial capability and well-being study in 2018 and you know from that study you know if we look at the left hand side that's seven percent were struggling they're struggling just in the day to day compared to 25 percent on the right hand side who had a sense of security for today and into the future okay so our job is to try and get as many of you from the left hand side to the right hand side as uh, as quickly as possible and as securely as possible to give that sense of security and financial well-being Today's topic, though, is about cash flow modeling. So I suppose what I'd like to do is, is just do a quick slide or poll. First of all, you might just grab your phones and we'll, we'll just take the poll. OK, you can get the QR code and, and maybe scan that to see. Has anyone used cash flow modeling um, before? OK, so so the key thing for, for and you keep answering there as I'm talking. So, so the key thing about today's webinar is to introduce you to the concept of cash flow modeling and how it enables you to make financial decisions now that impact you in the future and would you make that decision now then if you knew the decision was the right one or the wrong one and that's what we're going to going to look at here so thank you to the 24 respondents who, who answered to that and um, so so i suppose a small cohort have used are aware of cash flow modeling but let's hope that we're going to increase the knowledge base on that so if we're going to look at an example okay in, in, in essence it's a real life example but you know, everything has changed, <laughs> everything that you changed. So we're going to look at, at Larkin and he works in, with Dell EMC. His gross salary is 83,000 and um, he has a bonus, which was capped at 15% of basic and he has four and a half thousand. So effectively Dell pay his uh, health insurance for him, himself and, uh, and Neve. He's 46. Neve is 45 and she's a teacher with a department of education and her gross salary inclu inclusive of all of her allowances is 68,350. They have two kids, two daughters, Cara and Bonnie, uh, eight and five. And I know the little picture, it looks like a little boy, but anyway, I can only do so much when it comes to graphics. So they have two daughters, Cara and Bonnie. Uh, they live in Bray, County Wicklow, and their mortgage is 182 and a half thousand. And there's 18 years left on the mortgage, effectively to take them up to Lorcan's 65th birthday. Um, they will pay 51,240 of interest. 
you know, between now and 18 years. So their total repayable is 233,740. So, and that's, that was one of their goals, look at that. They have completed, the, you know, the spending plan and we will review that shortly. So this is, this is the cash flow modeling because I'm going to flick out of uh, PowerPoint shortly and we're going to go into the software and look at the example as if I was presenting and talking to Lorcan and Neve and showing them uh, the answers to the questions they posed in terms of what does the future look like for them? So what did they want to know by completing the cash flow modeling exercise? They expect both Cara and Bonnie to go to university in Dublin, and they'd like to be able to afford to allow them to live away from home, maybe on campus for a year or two, and then, then in digs. Can they afford this? Okay. The mortgage on the family home is to age 65. They would like that gone by age 60. Can that be done? Neve would like to retire as early as possible, uh, age 58, which is the age that she can retire at. Uh, she's, she joined service and uh, with Department of Education, she can retire from any age of 55 on once she has 35 years of service done. And that is 58, so she's told us that. Is that financially feasible for the family? The what ifs. What does this look like? And the what ifs in effect is, well, what if one of them died or if they couldn't earn the income that they're currently earning because of a disability or an illness, what impact would that have on the family? Okay. And lastly, what does their retirement picture look like? And can it be improved? So there were the five questions that Lorcan and Eve came to us when we were doing this exercise for them. Okay, so that's my cue here now to go on then to say, well, where do we actually start? So the first thing I asked Lorcan and Eve to do was, well, tell me about your, your incomes. And I asked them to quantify, you, you know, their cost of living. First of all, break down how much money comes into their household every month. Obviously, Neve is paid fortnightly, right? So we can multiply her fortnightly income by 26.09 divided by 12. And that gives us a figure of 3,545 for her. In total, when we look at all of the income for the household per month, they have a regular monthly income of 7,950. So we need to know the incomes coming in. From that then, well, we need to know, well, what is the current cost of running their household on a monthly basis. And Larkin and Eve told us at the top left-hand corner that Larkin needs for his own personal spending, 700 euros per month. That's for his lunches, his transportation, socializing, and, you know, gets his hair cut and, and buys a new shirt, etc. You see him there shopping, right? So he needs 700 per month. Underneath that, Neve said that she needs 850 per month just to enjoy her life the way she likes to do it, okay? On the right hand side are all the costs associated with the household every month. So they're there every month of the year, okay, from the mortgage, the life insurance, uh, they pay insurances, childcare, utilities, the car loan, groceries, uh, they pay their financial planner, uh, pocket monies, they're saving 750 euros per month, which is great, and they've uh, the gym and 250 for miscellaneous type of stuff. So that's what they tell us, they are the expenses in their household every month. And then over the course of the year, they have other expenses that, you know, they're not there every month, but are there over the course of the year. They get the car serviced, they go on a short break, they have the big holiday, they pay for insurances, Christmas and occasions, and clothing, footwear, uh, the TV license, all that sort of stuff is payable, but annually. So when we look at the overall, the overview of the spending plan, they have a monthly surplus of 204 euros. Okay, that's the monthly surplus. And I'm just going to show you that in, in, I suppose, larger font, because when we look at the income, and I'll have gone through this with you when, when I did the presentation uh, prior, you know, Christmas, when I started off the, the webinars here on, on Wednesdays, the spending plan is all about understanding how much comes into your household every month and every year, and where does that money go over the course of the year? So every month, 7,950 comes in. Lorcan and Eve take 1550 for themselves, their discretionary spending. The, the household needs 5000 a month to pay all the bills, okay? And they then set aside 1181 into the separate account to cover the bills that come up over the course of the year, but not every month, okay? That's a separate bank account they use for that. So in, in theory, in effect, and in practice, they have a surplus of 204 euros per month. And that is fantastic to know. And that's the starting point for cash flow modeling. What is the current picture? Okay. So I suppose 
a quick one for for you to answer maybe you know would you know your monthly surplus amount like just i'm not asking you to you know tell me answer, but if, if you were to say you know it's lorca neve is 204 would you have an idea of your surplus Okay, we had, we had over 20 respondents and the second one was always quicker. Have a good idea, vague notion. Not sure my figure is a surplus. Therefore, <laughs> you're effectively saying that you may be running a deficit. Um, okay, so perfect. So people have a good idea and they have a vague notion. Perfect. I would, if, if you have a vague notion or you're not sure, our spending plan is available from the knowledge corner of our website. It's free to download. Download it and make sure that you sit down and completely and accurately um, input your details, okay? Because it's a very important to understand the figures that come into your household and where does that money go monthly and over the course of the year, okay? So uh, we've 29 respondents and thank you to everyone there. So and to the 17, hopefully that we'll be able to get you <laughs> closer to, uh, to having a, a, at least balancing at the end of the month after today. So thank you to everyone there. So that's, that's the spending plan overview then, where your money goes. That's when we see Lorcan and Neve they can account for 97% of it and 3%, that's the surplus. And we're now gonna take that data, okay? And we're gonna transfer that data into this cash flow modeling software. But all we're, all we're taking in effect are the data from this, this graph here on, on the uh, right-hand side. We're just kind of taking that data, inputting it into the cash flow modeling and seeing what does the future hold for Lorcan and Neve. So I'm just going to come out of this. I'm going to stop sharing this one because I'm going to share my other screen now, which is the cash flow modeling, and get my little mouse going here. So again, I, I hope that's coming through loud and clear or, or clear for you there. So if you're on a laptop, this will be very clear. If you're on a phone, the, these, these few slides might be a little bit small, but when I open it up to the actual modeling and the forecasting, uh, you'll see the color coding and that'll be very clear then. Okay. So wh wh when we're presenting the, the modeling to clients. We've taken their data that they have given us from the inputs and the client questionnaire that we'll have sent them. We take that and we complete their personal details. We've Lorcan, and Neve, Cara and Bonnie. We put in their dates of birth. We've put in their in employers. Uh, Lorcan is working for Dell. And uh, as you see here, Neve is a teacher with the Department of Education, okay? There's no other income right that's that's what they have they have no windfalls coming or expected okay they have savings so they, they have 21,000 uh, 250 in in the current accounts and deposit accounts they're saving 470 a month there so so they're saving 470 months every month into these accounts but they have a college or a university savings account again it's on deposit they're saving the child benefit in there and that's why the 280 is is the figure there so that's what they're saving and remember that was one of their their queries can we afford to send the girls away to university, living away from home, if we continue saving 280 per month? And we'll have to look at that, okay? They have no investments of note. Um, and so in terms of retirement planning, uh, Larkin is in the Dell uh, defined contribution pension. He's 163,000 there at the moment. He's contributing 10% of his salary and the employer is also giving him free money, which is the employer contribution of 7%. That's excellent, okay? Defined benefit, well, that's, coming into the Department of Education. So um, I'm not going to dwell too long on the actual inputs here, but just so you know, you know, it's defined benefit like most, like most of you there. So we input that and uh, we'll see all that coming through in a second. The state pension. So when we're doing cash flow modeling for a, someone in the superannuation scheme, we, we align, the system isn't au fait with coordination of um, you know, the state benefit A1 versus D1. So we just assume everybody is D1 for the purpose of, of, of what I'm showing you here, okay? But obviously for Larkin, he's entitled to the state pension. So it's about 12,900 today. And that 15,000 is effectively, if it indexes by 1% per annum until his 65th birthday. And I'll show you that again in more detail, okay? Um, the property, they own their, their own home on Main Street in Bray, it's worth 650,000. I mentioned to you they have a mortgage, it's 182 and a half, and that's going to last for 18 years. Um, they have a small car loan, that they're on PCP and they're paying 350 euros a month for that, okay? Protection, 
yeah, they have mortgage protection in the event of their debts only. So it's only a debt benefit. Um, Larkin has a debt in service with uh, with Dell by multiple of four times his salary. And Neve is the Department of Education to one and a half times her salary. Um, income protection, yeah. Larkin has his income protection through the Dell uh, scheme. So that's a benefit of his employment. Um, they have no serious illness cover. That's okay. And then we look at the expenses. So so these are these two here, the, the Larkins, and needs that's a discretionary spending the 700 and the 850 per month these are the expenses for the girls that we know are going to crop up at a at a point in time in the future the university costs so so in today's world i know the technological university of dublin what was dit their study or their survey from the academic year 1920 said that to live away from home in Dublin was 12,171. So we use that figure and we model that outwards for the next 10 and, and 13 years for Cara and Bonnie. So in effect, the system is then calculating, well, how much money do we need in 10 years, 11, 12 and 13 years time to fully educate Cara when that figure is indexed at 2%. And actually the figure is about uh, nearly 57, nearly 58 grand. So you know, that's what the system is doing. The, the income to meet the annual expenses, again, we're taking all that from the spending plan. Childcare, we use childcare as well separately because we stop it at a certain point in time in the future because ultimately as the girls get older, there'll be less of a requirement for childcare. Groceries, again, it's coming from the spending plan. We, we do discount it when the kids have finished college because we assume they, they leave home and don't eat as much. <laughs> okay, and the balance of the monthly spending then, therefore the annual expenses that crop up over the course of the year, because they're on PCP, um, ultimately they will have ongoing car servicing costs if, if they want to maintain the car. So when we look at the modeling then, we put in all of the expenses for their household, Lorcan and Eve's household from now, and now is over here on the left-hand side, 2022 all the way to the right hand side is you know some people call it one thing or another but this is when we hopefully will you know when we leave the earth so we've set mortality at 90 okay you could go to 100 um, but then the numbers get very small altogether but reality is life expectancy is to late 80s so we model everything out to the late 80s actually to 90 okay so when we see red so from a cash flow modeling perspective red isn't ideal because it means that you know, we're spending more money than we are generating or bringing in, okay? So all you see there is red. So that's not a very good picture. So let's actually build the, the, the modeling then outwards over the course of the phases between now. So we look at the employment years, you'll see there, I'm gonna make sure that my mouse is, is, is working. The employment years here in the purple, this blue is from the girls, the, you know, the seven or eight years that the girls will be in college. Um, retirement, so we break retirement into the go-go years the go slow years the reason we break it down is that normally when people you know retire they're they're healthy please god they're fit and they're active and they have the time and they have the money so th you know they go and do stuff right the go-go years we get a bit slower you know from about 75 on and we call that the go slow years right so that's that's why we just break the phases because when you talk to people they may decide to, you know, to have different activities, different goals they want to do. So we can break the phases and put various you know, events in there. This is the, these are the events that we're, we're going to look at here now. Um, Cara starting in university. So we assume she'll graduate in four years time. Bonnie will start um, in 2035 and she'll graduate four years time. Neve would like to retire. Okay, she can retire at her normal retirement age, which is 60, and Lorcan's normal retirement age is 65. Okay, so they are the times. And as you see here, as you can see up here, these, these events, we can drag them into the timeline and we can create an event, for example, travel the world, maybe have a midlife crisis and uh, start a new business. Right? So, so when we're working with our SME clients, you know, it's all these things that we're dragging in, we're creating models because these are things that people want and we can do simulations then based on unfortunate events, the what ifs of life. But let's go back here. So if we build the base plan, so what a base plan is that if you did nothing other than what you're currently doing, how would the future look? So let's build in the employment. So they're going to stay working. So all this blue is the income that we're going to earn from our employers. 
Okay, there's a drop here because Neve will retire at 60, her normal retirement age, if not earlier, and Lorca will continue to work until he's 65. That's where his blue is coming in there. Other income is the child benefit. So you see that little kind of purple popping up there. And at a certain point of time, then we're going to retire. Right? So what's going to happen is Lorcan will retire and he will take a huge chunk of cash as his tax-free lump sum from his defined contribution pension. The model will say that he'll have over 800 grand in his fund if he continues, excuse me, if he continues to pay the percentage that he's, he's getting and his employer continues to pay 7%, he pays 10, that's 17% of his salary. If that grows by 5% per annum, he will well over 18, or 800 grand. He'll have annual income from that pension as well through the approved retirement fund. That's that pink coming in there. And Lorcan will also have the state pension from age 66 on and the transition pension from 65. Neve will have her defined contribution, a defined benefit pension from the superannuation scheme. And that's that big injection of green here from 60 on. It's the annual income, the defined benefit pension, plus the tax-free lump sum, three times the pension kicking in here. OK, that's a big spike there. We assume then all that money goes into their cash reserves and they can spend that when they need it. So by looking at the modeling here in the retirement phase, we still have red. Ooh, OK, OK. So just from the models that we're seeing here, the expected state pension, the expected defined benefit from Superan and the the 5 percent contributions and 6 percent ARF deductions here, they'd have red. Have we enough money accumulated in savings? Oh, yeah. OK, so this blue is, in effect, money we're taking out of our savings in order to top up. And obviously, because they're over 65, they get the dirt back. So in effect, their retirement picture is looking quite good for Larkin and Neve if they continue doing what they're currently doing. OK, and in effect, when we show them this and when you show people like this, there's no red there. You look at the, the retirement funds, huge ARF fund available for, for Larkin and Neve is steady Eddie here defined benefit as will be the case for you okay so when when we looked at the questions we were posed we said well what is actually this rate here in, in this phase and, and this phase that you're seeing here this is the phase of university in that blue it's when Cara will start she'll do four years Bonnie will overlap her here in this year and she'll do another three so there's it's actually seven years and there's one year that both girls will overlap and that's a common common story for a lot of people okay so but what's also a common story for a lot of people is that the way they save currently saving the child benefit in a deposit account okay so i'm now going to look at you know the the questions that we were asked of Larkin and neve okay and if they continue saving the child benefit amount in a deposit account with on post they will fail in what their task here is that will we have enough money in the educational savings account to, to educate the children no no is the answer to that so so the straight question then is well what would we need to do to have enough money to educate the children so we know the cost for cara is fifty seven thousand seven hundred and eighty four because the modeling has told me behind the scenes and the cost for money is about 60k okay so so where do we get you know that type of money that 117 uh, thousand euros well what we do is i'm going to compare a plan and our recommendation would be okay i'm going to i'm going to show you a plan here now and say right university funding if you transfer the method of saving okay from a deposit account to a, a well diversified unit linked investment account if you transferred the existing savings of 17650 because we know they have that if you transfer the 280 a month and increase that to 450 per month we have to assume a growth forecast so we assume a modest 4% growth there you go there is no red here if those outcomes are achieved we transfer to a unit linked savings plan we transfer the 1760 already saved we transfer the full 280 and we top it up by 450 per month perfect there is no red if that investment secures four percent growth for the next 10 12 13 14 15 16 17 years and that's it all that is gone that red that you see in the top is gone okay so that was the financial planning. That was the benefit of being able to show Lorcan and Neve, well, cash flow modeling, if you can continue doing what you're doing, you'll have failed in, in, you know, in your I suppose, requirement to have enough money in that savings account. So we limit 
all of the all of the costs associated with, with pearl education to the plans into which they're saving. So we're not taking any other money only from that existing savings. It's the same here. We'd have plenty of money in the educational savings account if they transfer 450 per month. If that grows at 4%, including the 17,650. Okay. The next thing they asked was, what about clearing the mortgage by 60? Could we do that? Okay. So I'm not moving the top line. I'm showing you, okay, the bottom line here. And I'm going to look at it from the debt perspective. Wow. Okay. What, what exactly are we looking at here? This is the repayment, the mortgage repayments that Lockhart and Eve will, will effectively pay uh, to EBS between now and the age of 65, which is the top line, and 60 down here. And the reason there's less yellow here is that we have increased the capital repayment from the 1100, which is the current uh, repayment. We've increased that by 237 euros per month. So we increased the repayment to 1,337. And in effect, we have reduced the term of the mortgage outstanding by five years to age 60. Not only that, we've actually reduced the interest from 51,000, which, which I showed you on the previous screen, from 51,000, we've reduced that uh, by 12 grand. So you've saved next to 12 grand here on, on that scenario, right? So the question is, can they afford to increase the child saver to 450 per month. Yes, they can. They're already saving 750. We take then an extra 237 and we top up the mortgage, right? They're on a variable rate. So in effect, we're, you're ticking the boxes here. Can we afford to increase the mortgage? Yes, you can, okay? So this is the benefit of, of looking ahead. The decisions I make today, what impact is that having upon us if we are to, you know, to make a decision today? The next thing they want to look at, right, can me retire at 58? Okay. And if you look at where the green is coming in here, it's coming in two years earlier. Okay. And we're not seeing any red. We've got the the tax-free lump sum has been brought in earlier. She, she'll have 35 years of service here. She can go. Okay, Neve can go at age 58 because that's the rules, you know, from, from when she started and the scheme she's in, she can go. Okay, she doesn't wait till 60. There's no red there, right? There's no red there. And in effect, what I actually also would have said to them is align the mortgage repayment then to age 58. You'll see here, it's gone. Again, two years earlier. It's gone by age 58 for, for, uh, for them. They've increased the capital repayment in total by 418 euros. So in total, the, the capital repayment increased to 1,518. And they've saved 19,240 euros of interest by doing that. So not only have they saved on time and saved an interest, we've now aligned the mortgage repayment, the, the elimination of the mortgage repayment to Neve's retirement date. All within using the existing savings and the monthly surplus that they have from their, you know, from the financial, uh, from the, uh, the spending plan that they have completed from us. So lots of positive impacts here financially, you know, so the sense of financial well-being for, for Lorca and Eve is, is quite high, okay? Until we get to the, the, the infect world, well, what if they die, right? What if Lorcan or Neve are to die? Because everything that we're looking at here is predicated on the fact that we're alive, we're earning the income that we're earning, which is allowing us to live the life that we're leading. But what would happen if we died? So I'm going to kill off Lorcan at 50. I've killed him off. Okay. And from a debt perspective, yes, he, he has left us. The widow's pension is kicking in. And, you know, there's uh, obviously his pension can kick into need as well. The mortgage is gone. So the cost of living for the household is 1100 uh, cheaper. You know, but, you know, so that, that's having a big impact there. And I've not seen any issues really here for, for, for Lorcan and Neve, if Lorcan was to die at age 50, okay? Because the life insurance from the death and service is also being paid into cash, and they're using that cash here to top up the, the cost of living, okay? What about what if poor old Neve died? <laughs> this is where the husband normally goes, yeah, show me Neve if, if Neve dies, okay? So if Neve died, again, I, I've killed her off at, at 50. Um, the spouse and children scheme from the Department of Education would kick in, so, so 
obviously Larkin is getting the income from from that there. The mortgage is gone and he's getting the cash from the death uh, benefit as well. So I'm not seeing any issues here. Again, this yellow line is this huge cash injection, um, huge cash injection when Larkin retires. There's a bit of red out here. Um, what's causing that? But listen, be at 90 at that stage, you probably won't worry too much about that. But he lived, lived, lived a good life. So, so even he's ran out. He's ran out here. Um, but in reality, we, I haven't adjusted the, the cost of living here downwards for a 75-year-old or an 80. And in reality, that's what should be happening. right? So I would have no concerns here. I'm always concerned about the, those who are alive. OK, so let's say if, if, if Lorcan has a serious illness at age, uh, I think 50, 50 as well, he has income protection, you see. So it's not as big an issue here because the income protection is going to kick in at age 50 and pay him his replacement salary all the way until 65, at which point his pension would then kick in. So not, not a detrimental impact here. But if you remember from the modeling and from the inputs, Neve didn't have income protection. For some reason, she hadn't joined the, the ASTI salary protection scheme. Now, look at that picture. OK, so it's not as pleasant a picture here if Neve was to get, uh, you know, a serious illness, cancer, heart attack, MS, stroke, leukemia, all that kind of nasty stuff. If she couldn't work because of illness, you know, she'd have a decision to make. Um, decision would be, you know, does she just retire from the Department of Education? Does she never go back to work and claim her ERP? I haven't modeled that in because these are the questions you have to ask. You know, she could take out serious illness cover. OK, which would clear the mortgage, right? because they've just planned that the mortgage would be gone if they died. So if they have the serious illness cover, the mortgage is gone upon the diagnosis of the serious illness. And the, the issues aren't as bad here. OK, and they're confined to a much narrower window. Right now, in reality, I would be advising her to join the ASTI salary protection scheme. OK, like I would be saying to any one of you here listening, you know, you have a very good salary protection scheme as well. The UCD salary protection scheme, I think it's underwritten by New Ireland. You should be joining it because you don't want to be looking at the red in your financial future because you have an easy fix, okay? So just, just be conscious of that. Um, so they were the, the issues that were brought to us from Lorcan and Neve. What does the future hold for us in the event of the what ifs? So because of the employment benefits that Lorcan has through work, very good, okay? So the, we, we had no real issues there. The issue would be if that Neve was to be out of work because of an illness disability, there'll be a significant deficit, okay? And I'll, I'll just show you that again, just to reaffirm the importance of right, okay? So when you're thinking about your own mortality and your own, you know, health, what if, and that's why we said the what ifs, what if I died or, or my husband died, my wife died, what if, what if this happened or that happened? Show me that, Jim. Show me, model that out for me there. And that's that's why when people begin to see modeling, they, they just want to see, well, well what if this line? You'll you be surprised at the various uh, scenarios that we are asked to model, but they're they're all relevant, okay? So the other area that Lorcan and Neve want to look at is the whole area of retirement. And, and in effect, you know, the retirement picture is strong anyway, right? Because when we look at the, the more pressing needs and when you, when you when you're talking about financial planning and you delve and get deeper into the into the client's rationale and their goals, you know, it was about getting out of work earlier for Neve. It was about 58. Can we do that? Yes. Clear the mortgage. Huge boost to know that, wow, if we focus our energies on getting that mortgage eliminated by, you know, age 58 for Neve, that's a significant saving. And I had the figure there for you. It was a saving of you know, 20 grand in interest. Like Lockhart has to earn 40 grand to pay that. It's a half year salary. Let me know. So it was allowing them to do all that positive stuff by just looking at colors. Okay. Just looking at all, all of the colors there. This is where we start in the red and we build that. And all that red is effectively coming from the data that clients give us when they complete the spending plan and send us back the information from the client questionnaire. And that is the type of information that, you know, your mortgage balance, the interest rate, we get the repayment from the spending plan. You know, if there's other things we look for, employee benefits. So that's where the questionnaire is so important. With. And all that data is input in here into the modeling. It allows them to run the scenarios and build the picture. 
do you know what that cut out of it? Okay, but that's what it's designed to do is, is to build the picture. So I'm going back in now into the here. I'm actually finished anyway. Okay. Now that should be coming through. Part of the now see your application. Great. So we're now back in, in into the PowerPoint section, right? And I know there's Q and A coming in there, which is great. But I, was, I want to ask you the question now: Is right? Would you consider using cash flow modeling to help you and your family to make a financial planning decision? What modeling does? It just takes your standard of living today, in January of 2022. And we model the cost of that forward. And by having good data in, it allows us to reduce the childcare at a certain point in time. It allows us to know when the PCP in the car is going to you know, be, be refinanced again. And that's the, that's, I suppose that's the issue with PCP is that you're in that spiral of debt, but we model that forward, right? But it allows you to make a decision. Should I do AVCs? Should I take out the income protection? Can I increase the mortgage repayment? Can I take six months off to, you know, to mind my elderly mother? Can I travel the world? Do I have to wait until 65 to retire? So modeling should enable you to make a proper decision today that impacts you, your family, your spouse, and the way you live your life into the future. It is a fantastic tool, right? So, for, you know, so I'm delighted that 25 out of the 25 said, yeah, God, I would consider using it. And that's, that's what today is all about. First of all, a uh, few people at the start said they'd never heard of it. <laughs> so even though they'd never heard of it half an hour ago, you definitely use it now. Okay, so that's good. There's an awful lot of benefits to cash flow modeling, and I've sort of explained those as well. It's allowing you to have a clear and detailed summary of your current finances, is to help you achieve that sense of financial well-being. You have your own goals, so it's important to plan for the goals ahead. Right? We just input the goals and the timeline. We create the models to your goals. Are they feasible or not is the next question. Okay. It also helps you to identify the, the potential financial consequence of the what-ifs. So straight away, Neve will be joining the ACI salary protection scheme. Or from your own perspective, you'll be joining your, you know, your, your own salary protection scheme there. Download the application form. I'm, I'm sure it's online on the website. Mark will give that to you anyway. Okay. Estimate future cash flow and realistic assumptions. So what are realistic assumptions? Well, growth rates, inflation rates, you know, tax rates, inheritance. As someone said to me, plug in an inheritance there. Well, who's it coming from? All these type of things we can we can model and model out. Okay. It, it, so cash flow modeling, it assists in determining your capital and surplus income in accordance with risk and return. So I just use on the educational saving there a, re, a return of 4%. Right? And I would say that's, you know, that's midpoint for someone in, in a kind of a, a risk spectrum of one to seven. That's someone who's, you know, I do this word medium risk, do you know, certain kind of medium risk. But in fact, even those funds are all doing well in excess of that. Right? But I like to be prudent and I, I kind of under... Um, under promise and hopefully over deliver hopefully okay so uh, become aware of any tax issues so we can model that for again for for maybe for business customers if they're planning to sell their business the sweet spot obviously is between 55 and 65 to avail of cgt exemptions and i suppose the key thing for modeling it is your future okay things do change and so does the modeling right so so it's always adaptable to what happens in your world i know at the outset mark mentioned you know, if people want to look at modeling, if there's something coming up in their world that they're going to make a financial plan decision, if they want to get help and assistance, yes, we can help. This information is on our website, bar the little bit at the end. If somebody wants to come to us to do a cash flow modeling exercise, we will set up a Zoom with them, first of all, to say, hi, hello, what are your objectives out of this? You will download and complete the spending plan from the knowledge corner of our website. Okay, that is the spending plan. I said it's not password protected and um, it's set in the format that we want. So. We did work with a, with a company of engineers recently, and uh, they all downloaded the spending plan. Let's say if 20 of them downloaded, we got 20 different versions back because they all thought we'll engineer this now to be bigger and better. Right? But we just want the one that's there. Okay. You'll also return the client modeling questionnaire that we will send to you after the Zoom. We will then take over. We will input the data. We'll assess it first of all, make sure it looks good and accurate. And uh, we'll input that into the cash flow modeling software. We'll prepare the objectives and map them out the timeline. We'll set up another Zoom and we'll, we'll put your picture and your world up on screen for you to see. We hopefully won't see too much red, but if we do, listen, we have time to hopefully help you to change the red into, into a different color.
okay and send you on the follow-up report on that we charge for our time our time is at 175 euros an hour plus that we charge for at least four hours based on on the initial modeling and the reason we say commencing from because normally when when we come back and deliver the modeling people say well can you do something else for me can you do this can you change that and do this so that might be an extra hour or two based on what you ask us to do okay but that's that's what we charge and last but not least uh we we do apply a discount for ucd staff mark mentioned that and uh, so he stole my thunder on that one but at least at least uh, I, I i did include it as well so i remember that one okay so that's everything from from our perspective okay i hope you've 